Hey everyone, Sir Terrible here again. And back to back days, I bring you another deck that just hit rank 1. And this is gonna be Astral Annie. And the version that I'm playing is Alan's CQ version, who just hit rank 1 with this in the EMEA server. So, obviously, a lot of you are very familiar with Alan, another great content creator in Twitch and YouTube, and also our first world champion back in 2021. And he just hit rank one with this deck. So I figured, you know, let, let's give you guys a back-to-back -back rank one deck profile. Now this deck is been running around now for a couple of weeks and it's kind of like an explosion of this card, Lord Brotman. So this card was really not seeing a lot of plays before the previous patch. And to be honest, there's not like a lot that has changed. What has changed is the way that the meta has shifted. So now you have kind of had like a lot of decks that are more reliant on just a single unit or a couple of big units. And Low Broadman, with his ability to just be able to kill any that any unit that is stunned or damaged, makes him the perfect way to be able to just kill any 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 deck that relies on just a single big unit. Because PNC and Natsus gives you so many cards that you can easily use to both kill a damage, to both damage a unit and then have a follow-up spell after, right? So if you were a fan of like the old PNC Noxus mid-range type of decks, I know like Conservatory was like a big one when Annie first came out, Annie Astro Conservatory, or back in the old days like Astro Draven, this deck might be right up your alley. It's another Astro deck. This time we're back to Annie. We're no longer playing Conservatory because honestly it's a little bit too slow with this deck. We're kind of more just relying on running the opponent out of value and eventually finishing the game up with Astral, being able to burst beat the opponent. We're able to kind of run them out of value because we're able to just kill all the units between Broadman, Disintegrates, Flocks, and everything else that you have in the PNC and Natsus package. Notice that we're not even, I mean, I guess we are playing a lot of units, but we are playing more spells than unit because that's what this deck is about. It's all about the spells to try to level up the Astral, keep your board, keep your your health at a steady pace and not take too much uh health point damage and then just kind of finish up that way we do play stuff like house fighters and sentry which allows to you know have chump blockers or stun the opponent's big attackers and and kind of just go from there we also do have a lot of body from flow annie is here to literally trigger the flow because she's kind of like a free way to trigger flow to kind of enable our caustic rift or our drum solo what for which gives us a lot of value and then obviously you have all this stuff like travelers Again, it's all about just outvaluing your opponent. We even play one in uh, Evil Imperfection is here, which I don't know how I feel about it, but again, we're playing Alan's list, so we figured let's not change anything. Regardless, it's a great mid-range deck, so if you're into that, this is one that's right up your alley. Uh, so hope you stay and enjoy the games coming up soon. If you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. I'll see you at the end of the video for some more game tips. In this match, we're gonna kiss Katarina, Sion, and Gwen. I feel like Gwen is one of the best cards in this type of deck, so I'm surprised that the opponent is actually going down to one Gwen, unless they're going two, two, two. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Oh, I don't hit. I don't like the House Spider. I don't hit the Disintegrate because I don't have another great way to really deal with the opponent's units. Hmm. Maybe we have to keep the house fighter though to have some early blockers. The, the reason that the house fighter is good because the opponent could have the two drop, right? They um what's it called? The one that summons another host. And the house fighter will allow me to actually block it, right? So they have the they have their both two hose. But they could have the butler, I think is what it's called. No, the butler is the three one. I'm really bad. I'm bad. I'm horrible with card names. As much as I know how to play around them, I never actually remember their actual names. That's a great job. Okay, yeah, so I, as we can still play the house spider and be able to block the host at least. So that's not bad. Opponent might not choose to attack with it, but that's okay because we're just gonna attack with Annie and the spiderling again. We're not gonna sacrifice our house spider into this into that guy unless we absolutely need to. We have Blaze Sash plus Disintegrate to be able to kill Gwen on turn 4. And we're just going to continue adding up some damage, I guess. That's fine too. Wow. So, it's a little bit annoying though. It's an Undyne deck? What? Huh. 
It's an actual dying deck. Hmm. Let's go here. I might just I might just actually drop the drum solo even without taking advantage of it because I feel like I need more cards. I feel like I need more cards right now. I don't think I care about the actual drum solo value. The sentry's not bad. You can kill this and that's the okay, so it's a soul cleaver deck. So the idea is that you can soul cleave your your scion and have like a really crazy attack. But I think the low Broman is gonna kinda help us remove the opponent from able to really do anything. Might actually be better to keep this now, to be honest, because I need a way to actually block them in dying. So I don't think it's worth it to lose it to the host anymore. I think I'd rather actually have the blockers. The triple disintegrate is a little bit awkward, but also not impossible to deal with. We have plenty of blockers for those guys. That's the Gwen. That's the Gwen. So now we have a choice. I think my choice has to be... Because there's no way... Like, I can kill that Gwen right now, right? Because this will always go last. Oh, that's a second Annie. I don't want to... Do I care about the second Annie, actually? Because Annie's about to level up already. I don't think I do. I think I'm just gonna actually keep the disintegrates instead. In case that the opponent does have a way to look, kill my Annie, then I'm not stuck with another Annie. Because I think the disintegrate has a little bit more value. I guess to be fair, we're gonna have the brow main, so it doesn't really matter. We can block. What are they dying? I don't even know that I blocked both, to be honest. But blocking both does set me up for the Caustic Rift to be able to kill them. Oh, the opponent could actually just have that as well. All right. So we're going to go Sentry. We're going to block her. We're going to Brahmin on the Gwen and kind of go from there. I think, I, I think I'm fine to just take that, uh, that damage, by the way. Hmm... Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, let's let's set them up so that the cost we can actually kill them. If I do put myself in a position where I need to actually kill them. I'm also going to open attack first. Because if the opponent blocks with the Gwen, I'm cool with that. This also means that my cost is going to be enabled next turn. Because we're going to go broad main. Yeah, we're just going to push this damage through. Scion is a little bit annoying. The opponent could also have a way to deal with this Broadman right now, but again, the idea is that next turn my Caustic Rift is gonna kind of blow out the whole board, right? The opponent has Scion, that's a problem too. The opponent gets another Gwen. We have another Disintegrate in our hand, right? So we can kill the Gwen. The opponent has to open because of Tivers. So we go here. Caustic Rift, Disintegrate, I guess we can go here, here, we live at 2, I think it's time for us to sacrifice this Annie. So I think we just sacrifice Annie here. It sucks because they were able to heal up because of their eternal dancers. The Scion could be a problem if the opponent has the Soul Cleave. Because we just tapped out of our stun. So if the opponent has the Soul Cleave and Scion, we actually just lose the game. So we just, we're just going to play as they don't have the combo. So if they, they already used one Soul Cleave earlier. So I'm going to have to play like if they don't have the combo and just call it a day. Um, I'm going to play Jump Solo next turn anyways, right? Yeah, I'm gonna play the jump solo next turn anyway, so I think this is fine. We just need to kill that Gwen. Don't blink or you miss me. Uh, actually, I'm gonna play the jump solo next turn. 
we could have attacked with everything as well. I guess not true. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose this guy. Hmm. This is tough. This is tough. I don't have enough blockers as I would like. I think I have to go for the Tivers. I think I have to go for the Tiver. T I guess we can go Broadman too. Yeah, maybe Broadman is better. I think we kick Tivers to next turn so that the opponent is forced to open attack every single time. I think keeping them low health ish is better. Wow, another Gwen. Okay, so this is all about just Gwen and Sion coming back. This is fine because we can still go jump soul and have disintegrate. We can still kill the Gwen. The problem is that the Gwen is still drawing a bunch, right? Opponent is still forced to open attack. Because we have Tivers. But that, that cannot be right, right? That cannot be right because we can just play this. And that's going to actually die. The Gwen is going to die. We have the Mystic Shot for the Katarina, so the Gwen dies, so Gwen doesn't get to heal too. We Mystic Shot the Katarina. And we just have to block all their Undines. Because the Brahmin kills units that are also stunned. And this is dealing two to the stun unit. That's kind of the combo with Tivers and the Brahmin. So I'm stopping them from healing two here. And we can just Mystic Shot the Katarina when she attacks. And we have plenty of blockers for everywhere else. I guess we can lose to an atrocity if we're not careful. So if we're not careful, we could lose to an atrocity. We could also lose to... Uh, we could also lose to... The Might. If the opponent has a Might... Then it's actually probably better to go here. If I let this Katarina live, though, it's worse for us. So, if the opponent has a might, we lose anyways, right? Whether we block with the Brahmin or not. So, if the opponent does have exactly a might, we're losing no matter what. So, I think we just slam this. If they have a might, they win. If they have atrocity, they win. There's two outs that they have here. I just know that I cannot let them level up this that 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 uh, that Katarina. Didn't seem like they had either, so that's good for us. We're gonna push two plus the Mystic Shot. That's gonna be four, five with Astral, assuming that the Astral doesn't die. Plus another three here from the Brahmin. Even if we lose the Brahmin, that's okay, because the opponent's gonna go down to five here. Okay, they, so they do have the Vengeance. Now we can go jump solo or we can go progress day which do we think is better hmm I think I'm gonna go progress day instead yeah I think I'm gonna go progress day kind of give myself a little bit more blockers uh we can let one Brahmin die knowing that we have the flock for the other stuff we can flock the problem is that I kind of want to use this flock now do we have lethal this is four. If we play this, we tap out of the house spider. So this is giving me... This is two. Hmm. Ah, if we get another card. <laughs> I could risk it, right? I could risk it. But my fear is that I'm not going to have a way to actually... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm relying on whatever I draw. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dead draws. Because... This plus flock would have been three damage. I still would have needed one more card on top of that to actually get there. And it needed to be a spell that costs two or less to get reduced. Because this would tap me out to zero mana. Let's see if we actually drawn it. No, it would have been enough. This would have been no, this would have been enough because we had we had triggered the floor, right? This is not a problem here because we had the caustic riff. Yeah, so this is not a problem just yet because we had the caustic riff. Because we can play Costa Rip and Disintegrate right after. Scourge. Does give him a heal, which is a little bit annoying. 
I guess we might as well jump solo because we have no other mana to do anyways. Yeah, perfect. That way we can play Ezreal and now we can actually just win. This is 4-5. Yeah, so this is Lito now. Yeah, because we, we didn't have enough. We didn't have enough last time to actually get the Lito, but now we do. We just go here. And that's enough. Doesn't even matter. We can block here just in case. Burst speed Lito. I think it was better to play safe. <laughs> I think it was better to play safe. And he ended up working out because we ended up not drawing the cards that we were needed to actually have Lito last time. So GG's. In this matchup, we're gonna against Vi and Jen. What are you looking for in PNC with this Jen? I look Travers might not actually be bad against them. I don't hate the Luke Travelers, right? It might hit the Jin or it might hit the Vi, which is better than nothing. We have Mystic, we have Astral. We ended up getting a pretty good mulligan here. Now, all that we need is Broadman, right? If we have the Broadman, I don't see how the opponent can actually do anything against us. So we go Annie. I guess they could have like a Mystic, right? They are on PNC, so they could have a Mystic shot here, which is a little bit unfortunate if they do, but if they have it, they have it. We still just get some Annie value here, force the Mystic out of them, which is all I can ask for from Annie. Otherwise, Annie's going to start slowly leveling up. We also do want to play the aloof on our next turn. On our next attack. Uh, well, as soon as we can, right? Because we are attacking on four. So if we give them the chance to play the buy, then we are going to just lose the Annie to that buy. Which is a different problem. Songha. Which is making me second guess if I want to actually put the Astro down. I might not actually put the Astro down. If, an, if, if the opponent has a second vibe, or they have something that can actually eat up the aloof travelers, I don't want to put my Ezreal in a position that is going to lose to the vibe. I'm assuming that their 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 biggest card is going to be vibe, but it could be something else. Okay, we drew the disintegrate, so it doesn't matter. Even if we don't hit the vibe here, that's fine. Oh, it's a low broadman deck. It's a Brahmin deck. Really? Interesting. That's interesting. We lose the Annie to the double static shot, which is fine. Killing the Brahmin is not a bad deal for us. So we have Mystic plus the Century to kill almost anything that the opponent might have. Drum solo. Okay, so I'm just going to drop the Annie down, right? So we just drop the Annie down. If you don't want to attack the school, I'm just going to put the Astral down as well. Oh, he have a Mystic? Okay. They have the Mystic. I'm just going to drop down the Astral. I think it's fine. I think it's fine to drop down this Astral. Um, going to attack with both. Just set this up for a Caustic Rift later. Or we can just miss the Shutter right now. Oh, they just... They got this gacha right now. Are you kidding me? That's the problem with putting Astral on the field so early that now we just lose an Astral for no reason. I'm going to opt to draw here, even if the opponent doesn't play anything, because I think it's worth it, instead of playing the Blaze Edge. Opponent should just pass here. Yeah, opponent should just pass here. Do I want to play this jump solo? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to pass. Because I was thinking play, playing the Mystic Shot to settle for the jump solo. But I think we're going to have a lot more opportunities. Opponent might actually just keep that gen in the red in their hand for the whole game. And that's the buy. So we go Mystic, Disintegrate. And the buy goes bye bye. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work with Static anymore. Otherwise, the Static would have been better than Mystic, right? If the center, cause, but, but it fits it. So the tough actually blocks the damage that will cause the disintegrate to to actually work there. Um, you know, I'm just gonna take this jump solo now. I don't like passing that much mana. Then next time we do another jump solo, and we pretty much have a full hand. Eventually, one of us is gonna have to blink. 
can do something. We have our second low Brahmin, which is not bad. Oh, actually, this is our first Brahmin. I'm gonna just draw as again. I think I, I think I'm valuing the draw. And I'm gonna go ahead and go for the aloof. And maybe we hit that gen. Nope, we hit the Riptide Rats. Oh boy. A whole Riptide Rats. Sure, I'm gonna attack with this. If you don't wanna kill me, that's okay. If you don't wanna block it, we just push two damage. Uh, I don't think I care. I guess I could play the house spider now. I just don't want to play the Annie now, because the opponent obviously has a lot of PNC removal, right? So this Annie's going to die. But Annie's going to die no matter what. I might, but I'm still thinking that probably better to, for me to keep it to mana. Yeah, like, Annie's going to die no matter what, right? We're going to go here. I might choose to go for this Blaze Setch and the Jin to set it up for the Brahmin to kill it. That's their third static shock, right? So that's their third static shock as well. That's a that's a big one. They're trying to level up this gen. Let's go here. This is setting up for the Brahmin to be able to kill the gen. Next turn he's gonna be dealing four to a unit, which is gonna be able to deal four to the Brahmin. Oh, maybe we don't actually put the Brahmin on it, right? If, we, if he doesn't use the second bounce, I think I'm fine with that. Okay, they are going to use the second bounce. If they are going to use the second bounce, then I'm definitely going to just play Brahmin right on it. If they don't do anything, I can just pass. Okay. If you want to if you want to lose that for free, I, I'm okay with you losing that. Places. If you want to attack here, that's also fine. You're going to level up the gen regardless. Okay, there we go. So they go actually for the attack. So because they want to get they want to get the damage, right? They want to get the damage through. So they want to level up the gen that way they get like the whole pretty much their decimate thing. But now that that's gone, I can I feel fine playing the Brahmin because we know we're going to have Mystic Shots to follow it up even if the opponent has a way to actually kill this Brahmin. Um, I still don't think it's correct to ever play this Ezreal. Oh, the Jin. The Jin did trigger that, huh? That's why they did it that way. I did not realize that the Jin was going to be able to trigger that. And the stack is full, so we don't get to do anything here. I was thinking, I was like, where did it damage the Nexus? And it was the Jin. It was the Jin spell that damaged the Nexus. So they set it up in such a way that I would take this damage. So that's their second Red Tyrex. I mean, it, it, it happens, right? <laughs> it sucks that we lose the Brahmin, though, because I'm not going to have a way to actually deal with their next Jin. I guess we can Mystic Shot it twice. And it can easily just die to almost anything here. Right? The whole the whole point of their deck is that they're able to play the Jin skill to trigger Reptile Rex. Now I'm understanding what they're trying to do. Not having any draw is also a little bit fortunate for us. I don't think I can summon this Astral until it gets to at least 4 HP. Maybe they play. Hmm. No, because if I if I don't have if I don't have the Brahmin on the field, I think I'm still also taking too much damage. But that's two Riptar Rats out of the way. The opponent has cards that cost two less right now, or they have their own Brahmin. So probably the best thing to do, I think I'm actually gonna go static. That will level up my Astral. And that way we can play the Astral and they have Mystic Shot open. I think it is time for me to just play down this Ezreal. It's going to force the opponent to have to react here, right? My Ezreal has 4 HP. We can kill the Brahmin with the flock.
Ooh, whoa, okay, so... I don't miss. Hmm. Let's attack with both. Let's attack with both. And that will set up the Caustic Rift to kill one or the other. If the opponent just takes this damage, I'm also chilling. Yeah, that's a cute Caustic Rift. That's why I wanted to wait for this flock to kill this. Because now we can go like this. The extra Mystic Shot does more if I go face. It does 3 damage. I can always kill that Riptide Rex with Caustic Rift. So I'm not concerned of it. So now the opponent is going to be down to 8. They will need for, they will need to have a way to kill this Astro right away. This is going to deal another 6 and 7. So we're 1 off. We're 1 off from having lethal here. We're 1 off from having lethal here. And we get it. So this is 3, 6, 7, 8. It, it was definitely scary, right? Not knowing what the heck opponent was playing made this a lot more difficult than I would have preferred. Uh, but I don't think they have any way to actually deal with us anymore. Okay, we can even keep the aftershock, I guess. Doesn't matter. So if we go like this, it's exactly seven. And we even have access to a sentry to survive another turn if we need to. They did get the way to deal with Astro, right? So if we didn't draw that uh, that Telstos, we wouldn't have had the lethal here. But we ended up getting there and properly playing around it by playing for the Static Shock on the Brownman so that we could actually counter when the opponent did that zero cost caustic with. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Feel the Rush. And this is going to be a tough match for us, right? Now, the Centigrade is... Ooh, that's a great draw. The Centigrade is able to kind of kill their champions. I'm actually going to see if I can go for more loose. Definitely don't want Astro this earlier. This early. Not earlier. This early. And loose could be really good at getting rid of the Field of Rush, right? That would take a lot of pressure out of us. He could also hit She Who Wonders, uh, which is also another thing that's putting a lot of pressure. That's why I don't like Astro this early. Because it means that the Astro is going to die to She Who Wonders now because it's in my hand. While if it was in my deck, it would be protected from that. The other thing is that we cannot summon Estrio because we're losing to a Quietus, etc, etc. So, it's a little bit dicey here. This is not a great start. Okay, opponent seems to not have a great hand either. So, I guess that kind of gives us an edge. I'm actually going to pass. If the opponent passes again, I'm actually, I am actually get to discard two cards with Aloof Travelers. And I think that's worth it. So they actually get, I actually get to burn two cards out of them right here. Vengeance and feel the rush. And that's cool with me. Because they decided to just wait. <laughs> uh, we can also now kill this guy as well. We can go Blaze Edge and Disintegrate. Oh, we can go Mystic Flock, right? I think Mystic Flock is better. Because I think I want the Disintegrate for Trindomir. Because the Disintegrate will actually kill the Trindomir. After he levels up. So I think it's more important to go for the Flock now. The Disintegrate is also better anyways. For their uh, Field the Rush target. Because the Field the Rush units are bigger. So the Flock is always better here. While they have little health. Opponent has 10 cards again next time by the way. So if they don't play anything. We get to burn 2 cards again. They definitely shouldn't pass here, no matter what they do. Definitely cannot pass here, my friend. If you pass, I get to burn two cards again. Okay. That that makes that makes more sense. Um Let's I don't think I ever get the chance to burn two cards again, so I think I'm just gonna take it. This is she who wonders. I'm just going to take this now because I really don't think I get to burn two cards one more time. I'm debating if it's actually worth it to kill their ram. Because as it is right now, they get feel the rush access next turn. Yeah, let's play the first disintegrate. We can also go... 
Yeah, now let's play the first disintegrate here. I was thinking about when I do the caustic rift first. Is that better? I'm gonna just play the caustic rift because I have too many of them. I feel like I might need this play such value later on. If I had a flock, I would definitely flock this, by the way. But I guess I would just use the flock on the on the trundle. That's the second trundle. That's the second trundle. Now we have Brahmin on the field, which is amazing. If the opponent, feel, opponent, we know that the opponent doesn't have to kill the rush. If they had a field of rush, we're gonna. I guess they could have top deck a field of rush here. The Brahmin loses to a She Who Wonders, but we discarded one She Who Wonders. So. The way that I've been told that this works is that if I have Disintegrate, I get to kill the Trindamir. Does that also work the same way if I have the Lord Brotman? So if I have the Lord Brotman here and I play a Blaze Sedge, does the, does the, does the Trindamir just go bye-bye? Actually, I can just play Caustic Griff, right? That will kill the faces of the old one. Like, does this work the same way as Disintegrate does? I guess we'll find out. I'm down to test it. I'm down to test it. For science. This is for science. It might not work because of the wording differences, right? Yeah, it doesn't work. Because the wording the wording of this is different than disintegrate, because disintegrate says when it takes like the next time the unit takes damage. This only works if Trendemir came down as damage after the level up. But obviously he, he wouldn't, right? Opponent can actually kill the Lord Brahmin here. Hmm. We could drop down this Ezreal. I'm gonna pass first, because I can have Disintegrate to just kill Trindamir. After the opponent pulls the Brahmin. It was for science. It was a for science move. Didn't work. We wasted the bombing for no reason. The opponent's gonna vengeance. Cool. We can just go aftershock. Or we can even go second S tier, which I think is actually better because I don't want to have to use the app. I want to probably use the progress date to be honest. I think I'd rather use the progress day here. Okay, so since the opponent did that, I can easily play Annie now. Play the Mystic. That's their third Trundle. We're gonna have to play progress day. I think we have to play progress day no matter what. We can level up the Astro, so... I guess we cannot level him right now, so the opponent could have Quietus and kill him if they have it right now. The fact that they didn't tells me that they don't have Quietus. If the opponent chooses to block the Annie, I think I'm fine with that. Like, do I give him the Temptation here? I think I give him the Temptation. If they block the Annie, then it makes it easy for me to kill the, 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 uh, the Trundle. I do still think that the progress day is better than trying to kill the trundle if the opponent doesn't block here. I am concerned that the opponent might have she who wanders. And that is kind of scary if they do. A second she who wanders is a problem. I guess again they will have to top deck it if they had it. Yeah, they will have to top deck that if they had it. Yeah, we can go here. Stretch to progress this your level up. We can caustic rip their stuff. I need a second disintegrate, so I need a second Annie. Opponent might be tempted not to try anything here. Okay, so yeah, I, I, need, I need to look for. 
I need to look for a second disintegrate, right? So we get the disintegrate, we have the blaze search, we're chilling. So the second disintegrate allows me to actually be able to kill that trundle. We are gonna lose all our units to the it that stairs. And and again, all this came from me just trying out science, right? If I don't go for that, I think we're still in a great spot. Alright. Sure. By having Nessie on the field, we get at least one more damage off. We are going to take five here, which is going to put us vulnerable to the... Uh, it's going to make us vulnerable to the thing, right? It's going to make us vulnerable to the atrocity. So that is going to make us vulnerable to the atrocity, which is going to be a little bit risky. I guess I could have gone for the sentry first, because the Estra leveled up after we had already committed the cost area. I thought I was going to get an Estra damage here, but because of the way that Estra works, that actually doesn't work that way. We can go here. Opponent goes down to 10. His drum solos next time puts him down to 8. This puts him down to 6. This puts him down to more. Let's start with Jump Solo first. Because I might not commit the attack. So this is 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. We need one more. We need one more and we get it. So we go here. We go here. 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 Ooh, that's a, that's one way that we lose this, actually. There is one way that we lose this. Watch and learn. If the opponent actually has the heal. No, because we just go... No, no, no. Yeah, we will potentially lose this, actually, if they have the heal. We need to start here. We need to start here first. I guess I lose to the Tavern Keeper. Okay, now we win. All right. If the opponent had the Tavern Keeper, that could also work, work right? Because he had to be the ramp or the heal. But this doesn't lose the Balfis or anything. Like the Aftershock was important, right? The Aftershock was important because it does push two damage. And that way I don't have to play around like a Vengeance. They actually do the Shivu Wonders. I'm unfortunately, a little bit too late for them, so GG's. We also could just put the Astral back down, right? Because we had another Astral and push the damage that way, so. There we go. In this match, we're going against Darius LeBlanc, which is telling me that this is going to be a Jetty's deck. Now, our deck should actually struggle versus Jetty's, right? Because we don't really have a great way to deal with their big units. I like the Mystic Shot to kill the Blanc or potentially kill the Giri Gerlin, right? Depending on what the opponent does. We do have a lot of blockers to the House Fighters, which is nice. We, we do have the benefit, right? We do have the benefit that I really know how to play against this deck. Because I know how to play against this deck, it does make it a little bit easier. Uh, we are going to open attack, for example, so that we don't have to deal with the Avarus and Trapper. The opponent also potentially has Spirits Unleashed, so if we summon another half spider, we're still gonna lose one spider anyways. I guess we push an additional two damage though if we do it that way. But we do lose a blocker, which I think I prefer to actually keep the blocker. Now the Spirits Unleashed does make it a little bit more difficult because now the Mystic Shot is not killing the Blanc. And we're also not killing the Yeti Gear Lane. If the opponent tries to go for Totals, we do have access to Mystic plus Blaze Edge to kill it while still being able to summon the Astro, which is very nice. Yeah, and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go Astro here, so that we can bait the opponent into thinking that we don't have a way to answer their... Okay, they're just gonna have Trapper. That's fine, too. Um, We just attack with everything, right? I think we absolutely just attack with everything. I'd rather their thing be damaged, right? That it, like, if the Jetty Yearling is damaged, now we can actually kill that. If the opponent has another Jetty, that way they're not getting the Abominable Guardian. 
we can start setting up the Brahmin, and once we have the Brahmin on the field, I think we're gonna be able to stabilize. Trollshan, cool. Ah, sure. I mean, we don't get the Mystic, but I'm not forced to have to use this Mystic now. Hmm. I might just jump solo right now, to be honest. I might jump solo right now, because I just want to get the draw. I don't think I need the discount just yet. Jetty? Okay, so I guess we're gonna go... I think it's better for me to kill this one. My concern now is that I don't have a way... If the opponent has a Totals, so I have no way to kill that Totals, right? Probably still worth it to just go like this, right? So if the opponent has the Totals, they still get another Jetty. And they still get to summon the Abominable Guardian next turn. Now, I feel like if the opponent had the Totals, they probably would have done it earlier. So I'm going to play around as if they don't have it. Darius? Ooh. Ooh. I know the Troll Shen is a punish, I guess. Brahmin doesn't do anything. Oh, this sucks. Because I'm going to have to let that Darius level up. I think I'm better off going like this. I think I have to just take that damage from Darius and just let it level up. I think we just set this up to die later. I guess, I guess it's not going to level up, right? The opponent's actually only getting 7. Because we can block the Trapper with the House Spider. We can block the Jetty Yearling with Ezreal. Opponent has... If I remember... if I'm trying to remember the list from Rick Rats. They shouldn't have a way to actually kill this Ezreal, right? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. I guess they could have Spirits Unleashed and that would kill the Ezreal. They could have Spirits Unleashed and that would kill the Ezreal. So I think I'm just gonna go like this. Yeah, Darius actually doesn't level up. I thought he was gonna level up, but I, I, I can just, you know, block the rest of the stuff, so it doesn't matter. Um, we can go here. I don't think I need to attack with the House Spider. Because if the opponent doesn't have a second Spirit Unleashed, I just want to have it in the back of my hand. What I need to be concerned about is gonna be... Um, what's it called? Bloody Business, right? But I do have enough cards that I'm not concerned about Bloody Business here. Yeah, this is the Bloody Business. We can go Double Mystic on it. Or we can go Caustic Riff. I think I'm just going to go Double Mystic. I think I prefer to have the Caustic Riff as a backup. If opponent has another Bloody Business, then they get to kill my, my guy here. I don't think I play around the second Bloody Business, though. It's also an additional 4 mana, but just like that, we clear the whole board. We get another trapper. We still have been able to kill the Darius because we still have to have the block after the opponent did their second bloody business. So that's the that's the benefit of it. Uh we can go caustic rift first. Or we can just go Brahmin, right? We can just go Brahmin and kill the Glory Seeker and still have the Caustic Rift plus the Ravenous Flood as a backup. I think this works out for us. Now, even if the opponent somehow top takes another one, it's fine. And I think we just won the game because their big jetties don't even matter. We go Caustic Riff and have the flock to kill that Darius and we're chilling. Yeah, so we flock. We go here, go here. That's your level sub. Doesn't matter what the opponent might have. It's, they ha they can have nothing that can save this Darius against the block. They lose one Trapper. This other guy's gonna die eventually. And yeah, opponent just realized. Again, I, I guess they could have been, you know, that second bloody business could have been the way that we lost. Because he would have kept their one Jetty alive. But because we have the flock, it does mean that we at least still kill that Darius before our Brahmin dies. 
I think I had to take the risk and not play around double bloody business at, at that turn, right? That's the one turn in this game that I think will like, change everything. Aside from that, we kind of have pretty much control of the game after we got that Broadman down the field. So GG's. In this match, we're going against, it well, looks to be Trash Maokai. My guess is that this is some sort of like mill deck. So I'm looking for a way to kill Maokai as soon as he comes down, right? We don't get the flock. We don't get the disintegrate. That's super unfortunate. Because either one will have helped us a lot. Okay, we get the disintegrate. We need to be able to kill the Maokai or the Sea Scarab as well as soon as they come down because that's how we're able to stop their mill condition. Okay. I might slap this Astro here. I guess the opponent could have quietus though, so maybe not correct to slap the Astro. Yeah, quietus could be scary. It's the Sea Scarab. And it, there is the Sea Scarab. Do I respect the quietus? Sure. I respect it. I respect it for now. I'm just gonna attack with the house spiders. If you wanna block them, I will do the disintegrate. You also have to play around the flock, right? So it's not worth it to ever block this. Okay, if you're gonna do like this, I'm not even gonna put the disintegrate. I'm just gonna put the blaze edge. It's even better for me. The sea scarab is gonna let them go deep pretty quickly, so I think it's important for me to kill it. Uh, I think I'm gonna let the glimpse go. Because it's not, it's not, sorry, it's not about them going deep that I care about. It's about them leveling up the mount guy. So having a glimpse and drawing more cards is actually worse for them. Because it gives them less targets to toss as the game goes on. Because they don't have access to like a... Um, they don't have access to a, a, a Nautilus to like bring back cards into their into their hand. Warden Prey, okay. I don't have anything in my hand that I want to really copy. So I'm just going to go here and just offer some squad. Okay, so yeah, so... If we had any doubt that this was a mill deck, then that kind of just confirmed us for us. They want me to kill their warden praise because that will give them progress towards the mouth, guy. Right? We're gonna play the Annie out. I think I have no choice but to let those guys die because I do need to start putting some pressure. Because we still have access to the disintegrate, I think I'm chilling. We're gonna go ahead and play this Astro now. Yeah, because of the disintegrate, I think I'm still chilling. I don't know that I attack with any. Actually, what if we just attack with everything and, uh, and force the opponent to actually block with trash? Because I'm gonna get pulled anyways. I think I am gonna put the disintegrate this time around. Yeah, they're not even gonna bother. Oh, they are gonna block with it. Oh, wow. Maybe we don't play the Century. Maybe we play Double Mystic. Yeah, I think that the Century is better off against the Maokai. So I'm gonna play the Double Mystic. Because I also guess we get advantage of this Mystic shot here. And the opponent has no way to actually kill this. Uh, to level up this... Uh, it's trash. They could have a second glimpse, I guess. Right, they could also have the hay spike, so we lose two Astrials. Because the other one goes... Yeah, we lose two Astrials. I still don't think I'm in a bad spot. We can also stop their mill by playing this. I just need to make sure that the Maokai doesn't come down into the field. As long as Maokai is not on the field, we're never in a position where we're going to lose because the opponent is going to be very slow at actually getting their stuff down on the field. Like getting their, their Maokai leveled up. We can even play Lord Brahmin now instead. Sure. We are all seeking an end to war, friend. This would allow my Annie to level up next turn and also means that the opponent cannot block it with the brahmin you can heal your three here and it doesn't matter to me ah uh, the sea scarab is annoying yeah the sea scarab is a problem i'm gonna have to just take this damage how it is okay if the opponent had attacked with everything i wouldn't have blocked so what we want to do here 
is that we want to play this sentry first and then have the caustic riff now that we drew i was gonna go the blaze edge but now that we got the caustic riff we can do the same thing and be able to kill the sea scarab oh absolutely absolutely you cannot do that yeah you cannot do that yeah, Balfis. Balfis is the only way, and actually, Balfis doesn't even work because the caustic whip happens after. So no matter what, we're gonna get a pretty big attack here. Yeah, you cannot do it that way. This kills the scarab at the same time that it kills all the other units, so the scarab doesn't actually get to get any value out of this either, out of all the deaths that are gonna happen. And the Malka, we obviously kill it before it can trigger, and there we go. So you get one toss from the from that, and that's it. They do have two other things that they have drawn from the Warden Prey. Uh, one of them just happens to be a minion. Which means that we can't even attack. Uh, does it even matter then, this attack? I don't think so, right? And just feeding his Maokai. Okay, you want to go ahead and kill the enemy? That's cool. We still have Disintegrate. That's a big deal. That Spell Shield is a big deal, though. We have no way to kill the Maokai now. Oh, that's so important. They actually got spell shield out of that. So now the Malka stays alive. That's actually kind of BS. <laughs> that's actually kind of BS, huh? This is going to cost me to actually lose the game. Wow. They actually got this, this spell shield. Otherwise, I just kill the Maokai. Like, otherwise, I literally just kill the Maokai. We made it. Yay. But our stuff did it. Most Wanted is gone, so at least I'm getting rid of some of their cards, right? I'm getting rid of some of the cards that will cost them to be able to actually get me there. We can actually... We can actually just copy the Annie as well. Right? And that way, we always have... Yeah, if we keep that Annie in our hand, and we also have access to... I think we're okay. Like, Tibbers will kill this right away, because the Tibber stuns, and then the two damage means that the Broadman kills the Maokai. So that's their second Maokai out of the way. So that's their second Maokai gone. We can actually just copy the Annie, right? And that way we have disintegrates every time. That's still not enough to level up their Malkai, but it will almost get them there. Because it gets to do two more. Malkai comes down. It's at 24. Malkai will be at 20. Yeah, 24 here. I, I think we're still fine though because we drew that Annie. I don't see how we ever mill ourselves. We and, and we have discarded enough of their most wanted. Okay, they had another one. I was gonna say we have discarded enough of their most wanted that it's not gonna matter. Now that we got another one though, it is gonna be a problem. They we just need to keep these two cards in our hand until the opponent just Maokai, which is a pro. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> That's a terrestrial. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We don't even need to keep any anymore. We can just do. Actually, yeah, you can draw. You can draw all that you want. I just need to copy this astral, and we're gonna have so many astros in our deck that it's not gonna matter. This is actually like the one of imperfectionists is the perfect counter because of how this game works, where your champions just get turned into a spell. It means that the opponent really has no, like, good way to deal with, like, our units. I'm gonna drop down the Annie, and maybe the opponent gets baited into putting removal on the Annie and thinking I don't have any more champions. And we keep the Flock and the Disintegrate to protect against the Most Wanted, and this is their second officer squad, and we already also discarded a Most Wanted. I think they also discarded another one earlier. Yeah, this doesn't matter. It's just a waiting game. It's a waiting game for them to play their trap. 
in their mouth tank, <clears throat> which they're obviously gonna draw right here. That's another most wanted, right? So that's that's enough most wanted that I'm kind of chilling. If you play Malka here, we just win, right? I guess I could have a I could have attacked with Annie. Yeah, so I think we just win. We just win here. Does this still leaves four cards in my deck? And we're gonna add another four here. Which are all gonna be Ezreal. So we're gonna have all the mystic shots. And the opponent just realized <laughs> what I was trying to do. By the way, if we kill their map, this is their last map guy. So if the opponent doesn't draw their trash, and they also kill one trash, if we kill their second trash, opponent's gonna mill themselves. Ooh. There's no way they attack into us, right? Like if they if they actually if they actually lose their second trash, they get they're gonna mill themselves. Because they don't have another way to get more cards into their hand. You cannot pull with this trash. Because you're losing to disintegrate if you do. <laughs> we have a 50-50 chance of drawing a second Astro, which will give me the mystic shot that I need to actually kill that trash. Yeah, let's just go here. I'm so good, I surprised myself. Opponent just realized the card that I copy. We kill trash, that's their last champion, and we just let the opponent mill themselves. They need to have the other trash in their hand. Which they could easily have it. They could easily have the second trash in their hand. One shot, all skill. Heck, we can just go like this. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. My guess is that they have the second trash, right? So they're gonna have to play trash the box, and that's not gonna do anything for them. We could also just win through Ezreal Burn, but I think this is more fun. I think this is more fun. I think making them mill themselves is more fun. So, opponent has one more turn, and then we that's them they get mill. So they have the last trash in their hand, in their hand, in the deck. That was the last card. And the mill deck just got milled. <laughs> that was this this was a fun one. I, I like I like when people are trying out different things in that. They have a shark chariot that actually works with the sapling. That's actually hilarious. Yeah, we killed two mild cards, we killed two trash. We know that the opponent has no card that can save them no matter what, right? I don't even care about losing Astro. I have two more Astros in my hand. Honestly, that top deck Astro was clutch, right? Because the Annie disintegrates wouldn't have been as useful as Astro. Come on, opponent. The mill deck is about to get mill. Ah, they could have another one, huh? I lose the flock, so they could have another most wanted in their hand. So what I need to do is actually play down this Astro. And this guarantees that I cannot get mill, right? Because I can always just get another Ezreal to put in my deck. So even if they have another Most Wanted, which I know that they don't, by the way, because this is their third one, and we already have two officer squads. Why would you let me get to see you mill, man? You want me to see you through milling me, but I can't see you get mill? That's not fair. GG's. <laughs> hey, welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's games. It's a lot of fun, right? Honestly, that Maokai game was probably the funnest one that I had, just milling them. Is perfect, right? That that one SEO top deck came in completely clutch right before the opponent could do their Maokai, and then from there it was like, opponent, you can't really do anything, you know? You can't really do anything. I literally have a billion champions in my deck, which is the downside of mill mill strategies in Legends of Terror, that the champions turn into a spell that kind of goes back into your deck. But anyways, enough about that. You kind of get the idea with the other matches that we showcased today, how 
you just kind of win by removing everything that the opponent can can summon to threaten you and then just finishing up with Vesuvio. It's really as simple as that. In terms of Mulligan, it's really going to depend on the matchup, but I obviously like keeping the Annie a lot early on so that we can potentially try to level her up. But after that, you kind of just go based on the matchup. If you if you need something like Mystic Shot to deal with Katarina early, that's great. If you need something like House Spider to deal with Aggro early, you also keep that. Um, if your opponent has no way at all to deal with Ezreal, which is Tafel, then you can probably keep your Ezreal and get value from the free Mystic Shots. A little Travelers against Field the Rush, as you saw uh, in the matchup that we went against Field the Rush, etc., etc. There's a lot of ways to play this mulligan. It's going to all depend on your matchup. Usually, if you're going against slower control, that's when you want to keep stuff like a loop traveler static shot. If you're going against aggro, that's where you want to keep stuff like house spiders, sentry against mid range, you know, the centigrade flock against anything that's relaxed in a single unit, like a big pantheon or anything like that, so that you can actually get them. In terms of like how to play this deck, I can first recommend you go watch Alan on Twitch, right? I'm sure he has his bot of when he reached rank one with this. I was actually watching him on stream when he reached rank one with this deck. So first of all, you can go watch him, kind of learn how to play the way that he plays, as well as learning from us in this video. But the idea is that, again, you kind of just running them, killing everything on site. Anything that you think is going to be a threat that's going to do damage to you, just kill it, you know? Because you have so much removal, and eventually you're going to start drawing so much with Jump Solo. And the triple peel to even tell stones, which gives you access to progress day as well as further removal to actually be able to refill your hand. That's why we play the tell stones, right? For progress day and also the jump solo also, also allows us to draw so that we're not running out of resources even when we're spending all our turns killing the opponent units. That's usually how you're going to play this game. And eventually you're able to just overrun them with value and run from there. That'll be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's showcase of another Rank 1 deck. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twister Terminal. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.